Hello, here we are on um, the Millionaire Training, the Golden Principles that created the top network marketers of today. We will be starting on page 266. Um, but before we do that, let's do our normal stuff. My name is Tammy Todd, and I'm here in Huntington Beach, California, and I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. Um, I'm just so, so, so blessed and so grateful. So um, my, we normally start out, obviously, is what, what we're grateful for. So I'm just so grateful for you. I'm grateful for the, this opportunity. I'm grateful for this company. I'm grateful for the leadership. I'm grateful for all of the tools that they're providing for us. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my boyfriend. I'm grateful for all my um, partners in believing and my friends and my, like, I just, I'm grateful for this life. I'm grateful that I got up this morning. It's just, um, I'm, I was listening to a message from my dear friend Margie this morning about um, my cousin had his foot amputated yesterday and, and I'm just, I feel awful for him. I'm just grateful that he's alive and that he's in good spirits. And I believe that um, I'm, I'm praying for him that he won't have to have the other foot amputated. Um, and I'm just, so please keep him in your prayers and be grateful for the body that you have, that you can move around and that it's fully functioning. And just, um, I'm just so grateful for that. So um, on to our, my goals for today are to do my daily DMOs, which are to reach out to 10 people um, every day. Um, I will be also, there's, there's lots of different moving pieces right now. So I'm working with, um, with a SIA support, trying to get some things figured out. And I'm also, um, working with new people. Um, and then I've got a couple of calls lined up. It's just a really crazy busy time for me. Um, but I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for everything that's going on for, you know, the, the bigger, the problems, the bigger life, right? So, um, if we, the more we're challenged, the more rewards we receive from that challenge. So on that note, let's go ahead. I don't know if I did this yet. Let's go ahead and do our morning meditation. Some days things are all over the place. Oops, trying to do something that I'm not supposed to do. Okay, here we go. So take a deep breath, a deep breath of life. The Talmud says every blade of grass has an angel leaning over it, whispering, grow, grow, grow. That blade of grass will press through cement, seeking the light. And that same pull of becoming is on and in you. It is the spiral pull of becoming that is everywhere present in the universe, for the universe itself is ever seeking fuller, freer, expanded life. And you are part of this wondrous spiral of becoming. Your very DNA is a spiral. And you feel that pull to the more. Learning to work in concert and cooperation with the great laws of the universe. Open doors of possibilities that prior would have seemed completely impossible and only for the few, not you. But now, through your interest, your study, and your willingness, you're beginning to understand that not only is dream building your right, but your responsibility. For you have come here to give the gift of you, without which the fabric of creation is incomplete. For you did not create you. You can't even breathe you. You're being breathed by the great spirit of life itself, and something wonderful is happening with you right now. It is this thing called life. You've been given a mind and a body, emotions and spirit. You are spirit having a human experience, using the mind and body and emotions as your expressing field for what you ultimately will choose 
as the demonstration of the life you know. So in this sacred moment, activate the faculties you have and know this, you are an image maker, made in the image and after the likeness of the one who gives you life, your mind thinks in pictures. Okay, that just feels so good. So let's go ahead and get started. We are on page 266, the success story of John Scholder, and I'm probably saying it wrong, senior platinum of Immutech. I was about to graduate from Stanton Hall University in Northern New Jersey. It was 1983. At the time, I was working part-time selling health club memberships in a Nautilus facility. If you remember back to the old Nautilus equipment that came out of Florida, a friend of mine named Tommy Houston, a very elite wrestler at Lehigh University who worked out at that facility, introduced me to the health club's owner, Dave. Dave starts to explain to me about this business that he and Tommy had gotten involved in, involved with called Herbalife. He explained to me that I could have my own business as well for $32. At that time, $32 was a lot of money for me. To put it in perspective, my vehicle at school was an old U.S. mail Jeep like the ones they still use today. I gave a check to Tommy and asked him to hold it for a couple of days so I could cover it. He graciously did. That night I got home, did my schoolwork and finished up around 10 p.m. I pulled out my new Herbalife distributor kit and looked through the magazine, the Herbalife journal that came with it. On the cover was Trish, Tish Rochin. She lived in a place called Plano, Texas. I didn't even know who Tish Rochin was and I didn't know where Plano, Texas was. But what I did know from reading the magazine was that Tish had earned $250,000 the previous year. For someone who had had trouble covering a check for $32, that was inspiring. I opened the career book and inside were circles and diagrams. I started to look at the marketing plan and took out a yellow legal pad. I put some names in the circles. I stayed up until 4 a.m. that morning, putting names in circles and making mathematical projections of what could happen with this Herbalife pay plan. By 4 a.m., I had made a million dollars on paper. I thought, this is pretty simple business. This plan makes sense. Whoever, whatever genius had put this business together, it was making total sense to me. Fast forward 30 days, I graduated from Satan Hall University. At that point in my life, I was very literal, a very liberal thinking, a left-winged person. I believed that business was bad, and if you owned a business, you were probably getting one over on, on people. At my graduation, I found out that the commencement speaker was going to be President Ronald Wilson Reagan. I didn't like him for a variety of reasons, one which was that he had fired the air traffic controllers. I felt like he was a union buster, and I'm from a very pro-union family. I didn't want to go, but my father, who was, was still alive at that point, said to me, you know what? We respect the office, even though we don't like the guy. <laughs> Boy, do I know that one. Sounds like my dad. You need to go. You worked hard all these years to get to, to this degree. You need to go. I'm glad that he had the, the position on things. I ended up going begrudgingly, and I was one of those guys. I had my arms folded the whole session. During the speech, President Reagan talked about some basic ideas, things like entrepreneurship and freedom. He discussed that when he was young, he, was, he met a wealthy man, and he asked him, can you help me find a job? The wealthy man replied, well, do you really want a job or do you want a career? I want a career. That's something that you have to find. That day, I began to understand that I really, that I already was being mentored a little by my upline in Herbalife. I'd been to several meetings, several small meetings at hotels, but there was going to be a much more extensive training the following month with the co-founder, Larry Thompson. I had heard so much about Larry, I felt like it was an excellent time to take the, the next step to, and attend. The problem was nobody in my upline had reliable transportation. I had my mail jeep, but that wasn't going to make the four hour trip drive to New Jersey to Hartford, Connecticut. My friend Tommy didn't have a car either, so he ended up asking his dad to borrow his old station wagon. Thankfully, his dad said yes to Tommy. So Tommy and me and the other three people we had recruited drove up to Hartford and stayed overnight in a hotel. The next day we got up and went to the training. I'd never been to anything like that in my life. There were at least 2,000 people there from Boston to New York and to in DC, a vast area. When Larry comes on stage, it's a magical moment. 
There was a lot of outstanding leadership in the room and having Larry there in person speaking was a huge deal. There were compelling things that Larry said that day that I still use in my business 36 years later. The number one thing that the mantra that he learned and passed on to us for things to change, you have to change for things to get better. You have to get better. It was the first time I'd heard those types of words articulated by someone. Larry's a stranger to me. He's an executive in this big company that I joined and I'm just a total nobody. I'm just a kid out there in the audience, but that message was crucial, not only for my career, but for my life. My upbringing was one where everything was the government's fault or it was the politician's fault, or it was the union's fault, or it was the contractor's fault, or somebody else's fault. Failure was always somebody else's responsibility, not your own. That day I got, for things to change, you have to, you have to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. I can say it in my sleep, and I can say it in Spanish and in French, believe it or not. <laughs> Larry was communicating a message related to him, and he was already hugely successful in his professional life as a result of that messaging. Hearing that one idea from Larry was, incredi was incredibly eye-opening and it po pointed me in the right direction mentally. When I initially joined Herbalife, my distributor kit came with the Larry's Millionaire training tapes, but I hadn't listened to them. My US Jeep didn't have the cassette player and I didn't own a cassette player at home. So I had no way to listen to the tapes. However, on the four hour drive home from the training, we all listened to them in Tommy's dad's car. I couldn't believe how funny Larry was on these tapes. He could be a stand-up comedian with the stuff that's on there. But what was right is that in all that humor, there was also so much wisdom. What, we, what also spoke to me when listening to those tapes was the fact that conceptually anyone could do this business. Larry and the other people who spoke at the meeting that day illustrated that point, especially Tish Rochin, the lady truck driver who was making over $250,000 a year. Mark Hughes and Larry Thompson created a brilliant business plan with Herbalife. Take ordinary people, and get them successful. Show off everyday common people having success. When I joined Herbalife, the company was having a $140 million a year. I understood that this was a concept-driven business. Today, I listen to some of our colleagues in this industry who are trainers and they're still in their training to teach technique instead of teaching concepts. I got from Larry that day in Hartford and listening to the millionaire training or concepts. For example, he didn't say, go down to the local bank and stand in line at 10 a.m. and talk to the first three ladies wearing dresses. Larry said, talk to anybody who breathes. <laughs> now that's a concept. Did they have to wear dresses? No. Could they wear shorts? Yeah. Can they be young? Yeah. Could they be old? Yeah. That's what I got from the millionaire training back in 1983. Concepts versus techniques. That is a big difference. The millionaire training was straightforward because it was only two cassettes. It wasn't like you had bought this big, huge seven-week training program and had to listen to 19 different tapes. It was simplified. You would listen, flip over the tape, and then listen to the other side. That was where we started. What Larry taught was simple enough. If you listened once, you got some. If you listened a second time, you got a little more. If you listened a third time, you got a little more. But you metabolized it as you listened to it repeatedly. The millionaire training had so many concepts that I needed to hear over and over. I say 9,000 times. I'm not exaggerating how many times I listened. I actually wore out the tapes and had to buy a new set about every six months because I'd listened to them so often. How you learn something is by repetition, where you, where you continually listen to something until you get it. And then it becomes your own once you get it. But you still keep listening to it because it always, you always miss something. What I found with these tapes is that there's so much information that you have to go back, listen again, go back, listen again. Read again, however you're learning. To become professional at something, experts say you have to do it 10,000 times. When it comes to learning, part of that involves hearing the same thing repeatedly. Then, of course, the other part of that is applying what you've heard. It's one, of the, one thing to listen to it, but if you don't apply it, you didn't learn it. The best teacher in our business is to tell how. To tell, show, try, do. And we all know the do part is the hard part, right? I was fortunate enough to meet Larry's two mentors, Jim Rohn and Bobby DePew, who inspired Larry's training. I met Jim at a, long beat, at a long lunch meeting in Dallas many years ago. I met Bobby through Larry back in the early 1990s. I would go out to California occasionally and visit Larry's, Larry at his ranch. One time when I was there, it was in New York. He called and he said, hey, Bobby's going to be out here, out here when you're out here. I couldn't believe my luck. I was going to meet the famous Bobby DePew. I went out to California and spent an afternoon with Bobby. 
I don't know whether Larry had something else to do or he just figured, hey, you know what? Let me stay out of this. You talk him, to him directly. I was skipping a generation. Larry was my mentor. I was, men I was talking to his mentor. And Bobby and I sat on the back deck for five hours. I just listened to this guy and relished the fact that I was getting to talk with one of the original creators of this industry. He helped orchestrate many of the compensation models, pay plans, and training that Larry would often reference. He passed shortly after that. But what, that, what an afternoon that was. As I look back on my 36 years now, getting to spend an afternoon with my mentor's mentor and pick his brain, just two guys sitting on the back deck in California, chewing the fat, it was a great opportunity. And somewhere I'll, I've still got my notes from that day. What we do affects so many people generation, generationally. <laughs> we don't even realize the lives that we touch. I have a huge organization of Hispanic leaders in my company. And one of them last week said to me, you're Tata. I speak some Spanish, but I was like, Tata, I know that's good because Tata means grandpa in Spanish. I put it in perspective. If I'm the grandfather, then Larry's the great grandfather. Even though my distributors don't know Larry, they know me. How many organizations are like that? Then Bobby and Jim are, are as well. We have a responsibility to teach the right things to the next generation. The last three years have been incredible. And currently I'm working as hard as I did when I was young. Maybe not that hard, but working pretty hard, traveling a lot and seeing new parts of the world. After the, or the recent passing of my insurance mentor, it caused me to reflect on the people in my life that helped me along the way. And Larry was one of them. I look back on that day, Larry came to Hartford to speak. He didn't know there'd be a guy in the audience who would get it. He probably hoped that there were a lot of guys in the audience that likely did get it, but one got it at least. My oldest daughter is starting to do some public speaking on a situation that came into her life that was a very negative situation, and she's trying to turn it into a positive. A couple of weeks ago, she was asked to speak to some people who are on the same road that she's on. Before her speech, I called her and I told her something that Larry had taught me. That is, if there's one who gets it, you did your job. If there's one who changes something, you did your job. Yes, you want them all to get it, but you're not, but you're, but you're all not going to get it. They're going to be distracted. There are days when they're going to be on their cell phones. They're, they're going to be thinking of something else, whatever. If there's one person, one person's life that you impact that day, you did your job. You can put your head on the pillow that night and you know, you did what you were supposed to do. I'm going to tie another concept of Larry's as well. When my daughter had her challenge and we were living in this institution that she was treated at, I told, I said to her, you know what begins now? She said, I know dad, one day at a time, a brick at a time, process by process. The funny thing is that that's construction talk. It's not multi-level. <laughs> I tell my kids and distributors all the time. It's a phrase that applies to everything. So once again, you take, you do, how do you take all the stuff that you, that we've done in our business and use them for your life? How do you apply those things when things are dire? Well, one day at a time, a brick at a time, process by process. My daughter got it and she's working at it and it's a struggle, but she's doing great. Larry has a legacy that has done so much for so many. When I think back on the influence that he has had on me, I think of several things. Number one is being a good student. I would say that is something many people wrestle with because we all want to be authoritative in our field and become and be good students. That takes a continual application of listening, reading, taking notes, and asking questions. Secondly, though, by being a good student, this is applied as an applied science. In my other non-multi-level life, of course, I've coached many different sports, and I tell people the only way to figure out what you're going, what you're doing, is to get out there and to get your nose bloodied. Nobody likes to get their nose bloodied, but that's just the reality of sports, the reality of business, and that's the reality reality of life. Your nose gets bloodied sometimes, and that doesn't feel good, but that's how you're going to learn. To build on that, even if you listen to everything, you read everything, and you've got a million notebooks filled with notes. If you don't go out and talk to somebody, I guarantee your business won't work. If you don't speak to your next door neighbor this afternoon when you see that him getting his mail and mention to him, mention it to him, whatever it is that you're marketing, all of the information that you learned is for not. It's applied science. You have to know how to work with people. And these are the things that I learned from Larry and from the other men who were serious about discipline as well. If you said you were going to do this, you better do it. Hold them, not because they're trying to be nasty, 
but because you want them to succeed. If they succeed once, then they can see it again and again and again. That's another concept I learned from Larry. If you can, if one can do it, all can do it. So I just really love this story because it's so true. How many of us go through that? You know, we, we can, everything we can do one day at a time, one brick at a time, process by process. We can change anything that we want to, you know, and that one of my favorite quotes from Larry is for things to change, you have to change. And for things to get better, you have got to get better you know, and apply it to yourself. It's not just something you say to your team or to the other people. This is something that you also apply in your own life. And it's so, so true. So I'm going to go ahead and continue reading on. We're going to start with Dan McCormick, the top global distributor of new skin. I'm here in my home in Coto de Casa, California. When I first started network marketing, I was a 19 year old young man. At only 12 years old, I got my first job at a Seattle's Supersonics Racket and Health Club for $2.35 an hour. Every day I went to that club because it felt like home, warmer than home actually. I took my pay as credit so that I could hang out and play tennis. It was, a, it was $20 an hour for court time. I washed the towels, did the laundry, vacuumed the courts. It was indoors because of the rain in Seattle. I watched people have a life that I never saw growing up in a single parent home. People had time freedom in the middle of the day to come and play tennis. And I remember their names, even to this day. I remember the airline pilot. I remember the salesmen. I remember the people who were in the military. I remember the world-class athletes. Some of the greatest athletes that ever lived came to either work out, played for the Sonics, or were playing tennis. They had what I didn't have, and that was money. And they loved what they did. I loved tennis, but I really wanted more than that, than I had. My mom was brilliant because every time I would ask for money, she said, son, you better make a lot of money because when you get older, you're going to need it. <laughs> you're always asking me for money. A lot of times parents would say, what do you think? I'm, money grows on trees. My mom said something different. I met a man there who built tennis courts. He owned his own company and his partner, and he were two of the top tennis players in the Northwest. They asked me to work for them to build tennis courts. At the time, I was a spoiled, rotten, young, arrogant, tacky, no self-esteem, no self-worth individual, horrible in school, no people skills. I just loved tennis, and I went there every day to play tennis. This guy asked me to work for him, and he said he would pay me $5 an hour. I learned what it was like to work. I mean, this guy really put me to work, taught me to work, corrected me when I was wrong, and it was just unbelievable. I did that until I graduated from high school and went to Washington State University. I always tell people that I finished college in two weeks. <laughs> the following summer, after working in the tennis court clubs again and building tennis courts, an ad in the newspaper showed up that said, are you making what you're worth? I live in Beverly Hills, California. I drive a Clinette and I made $96,000 in the health and, health and nutrition industry, supervisory positions available. Here's what was weird. That ad showed up in the newspaper from a group of distributors from Canada. <laughs> I was scared to call it because I had no background in supervision or business. I used to look at these ads every day because it was inspiring to see what opportunities would be out there. I didn't know what, what, what I was going to do besides build tennis courts or string tennis rackets and play tennis. This ad came out on a Sunday and it stayed in the paper for four days in a row. Finally, I looked at my mom and I said, they must be desperate because that ad is still in the paper. I kid you not. I remember the phone <laughs> The phone call because it was a live answering service that said somebody would call me back. I remember sitting at my desk in the office that I set up because I wanted to be in business somehow. When the, that phone call came in, a guy asked me some questions, just like Larry trained them. Tell me about your business background. He said, I was nervous. I really did not want to tell him that I worked in a tennis club. I must have done okay because he invited me to the Greenwood Inn in Bellevue, Washington, Northeast 8th on, for an opportunity meeting. I said, how am I going to recognize you? I'm a really big guy with a wide part. <laughs> I had no, so much hair at the time. I had no idea what he was talking about with the wide part program. <laughs> I found him and he got this flip book out. He started going through the program with me. He talked about the company history. He told me about the product and he told me about the opportunity. And then he started telling me some stories of people who were my age, Santa Roberto, Ron Trichard, people who were literally, literally 22 to 23 years old. I was 19 and they were a little they were out there beating the streets, making sales and weight and weight loss. August 12th, 1982 was the day my life changed forever because that night, not only did my upline tell me about a book to read, but he gave me the millionaire training cassette tapes. Now learning on cassette tapes back in the day was a novelty. 
it wasn't, I wasn't a good student. I was a good learner. I wasn't a good learner, but I wanted to appreciate what this meant to me. I'm lying in my bed in my room. I plug in the millionaire training tape on side A. And I promise you, if I slept more than an hour straight for the next week, that would have been amazing. There was something that came over me that was so powerful. I had such, so much pure adrenaline. I found my life's calling. You have to understand, I was in so much pain as a kid because I didn't know what there was in life for me outside of tennis. Here, I saw the dream. I saw the opportunity. I knew my skill level could grow into it. I was immature beyond belief. My mom came to that meeting with me. I had a couple thousand dollars saved away from building tennis courts at $5 an hour. There were only 30 people or so at the meeting. Here's my application, I told my sponsor. He invited me to go out to his car. He opens the trunk and he says, how much product would you like to start with? The senior consultant pack is a good way to start because it has the biggest discount available. I wrote him a check for $296 right there. I walked away with my products and a new lease on life. About a month later, Larry came to Seattle and it was a, the big training. Now I've got the training, the millionaire training course through my veins. I'm riveted. My sponsor asked me, what do you like about those tapes? I was so immature. I was so at a loss for how to communicate. And I was too embarrassed to say, I just wanted the money. That was at a time when I believed money could fix everything. I imagined how cool it would be if, if, I, if I could be that guy and be able to show my friends who laughed at me for dropping out of college that I was right. Two weeks into college, I dropped out. I say I finished college in two weeks. I didn't have the mental capacity to do it. My brain didn't function there in that environment. No, you've got to go to college, Dan, my friends insisted. I just knew it wasn't for me. Instead, I'm inviting everyone I can to these three-hour trainings with Mark and Larry. I'm standing in my tennis club, recruiting men 15 years older than me who came there to work out, to play tennis or to play racquetball. I remember this businessman who I invited to come with me. He showed up. There are hundreds and hundreds of people there. I'm all fired up. I've listened to the millionaire training tapes. I've got my sponsor and I'm introduced to this 23-year-old woman in my upline, Marilyn, who was the first distributor for Herbalife in Canada. Her sponsor lived in LA. I was so blown away by her composure. It was quite amazing. I was young, raw, and hungry. I heard stories about people trying, talking to people. They would wear a button that said, lose weight now, ask me how. They would do this thing called 10 pennies. I went to the mall with my sponsor and I walked and I'm walking towards the Nordstrom's counter. And you know how all the people behind the cosmetics counter look amazing. I'm walking towards this lady who's really well put together. And I looked at my sponsor and I looked at this lady and I said, this lady looks like somebody who would want to make $10,000 a month. She leaned forward on the counter and said, you bet your life I would. How would I do that? I looked at my sponsor and said, yeah, Dennis, how would she do that? I didn't know how to do it. True story. She signs up. She buys her senior consultant kit just like that. Just like I bought mine 10 days go by and she's not communicating very well. My mom says, hey, you've got something in the mail from the bank. Her check bounced. I never got the money. I'm talking to everybody I can as raw as I am. I'm talking to people off the newspaper ad. I call this guy named Joe. I remember his name to this day. Hi, Joe. My name's Dan. Are You're looking for an opportunity. I can help you. Long story short, I signed him up. He's absolutely fired up beyond belief. Writes me a check, senior consultant kit, check bounces. I never got the money from either one of them. Tough start. I didn't have a lot of money, but I went to another training class where Larry showed up at the Red Line Inn in Belleville, Bel Bellevue. There were like 300 people there. And again, it was just the reaffirmation of the principles from the millionaire training cassettes, as well as real life experiences where I had guests in the room. My distributorship was starting. And I can't remember if my mom was there, but I know my grandpa was there. My cousins, my uncles, strangers, you name it. I was just doing everything I could. It was a riveting process. Larry will appreciate this because he'll know. He probably can remember how immature I was. It took me seven years before I got this stuff. Personal development is personal and everybody comes in a different level. I, would have, I wouldn't have been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD or one of those things back in the day. I probably had a learning disorder but I didn't, I didn't know it. I just remember I was not smart when it came to books, but I loved people. Larry likes to refer to these things as concepts, right? I always use the word principles. He and I talked about this before. A principle is a strong channel that moves you forward. Print is a strong channel. Pull is moving you forward. When you think about concepts that he taught in the millionaire training, there's universal principles that are timeless. When I look at that period of, my, of time, I was a young man. 
Larry was so good at every aspect of what his mentors taught him of breaking it down, simplifying it. The great thing is I have done a training show for at least 18 years and I teach this stuff every day in my life. When my distributor calls me, they want to talk about why they're not, do, not where they want to be. I point to those principles. There's nothing outside of it. There are no shiny objects. <laughs> There's only one shiny object that Larry taught me. And that is we get paid to recruit and sell. What, we, what do I do every day? I recruit and I sell. In my company with my product, my compensation plan, it has incentives on how you recruit and how you sell. Back in 1982, it was a little bit different back then, right? We had a different retail markup, different product, different compensation plan. We didn't have the internet or a Zoom meeting like we do today. But every single day, 38 years later, I still teach the same thing. February of 1983, I received a compensation check for one penny. I've kept it all these years. Now that was signed by our old friend, Ed Williams, just after I started. Remember Marilyn, the first distributor in Canada? She and I were married only 10 months after meeting. I always tell people it's a good thing to marry your upline, especially three up. <laughs> Marilyn documented our career in a book several years ago about our journey in Herbalife. She documented everything from her application to her status of supervisor, to her first $20,000 check, to the articles being written about her, letters from Larry and Mark being invited to the first corporate school of all time. When Canada was just blowing up and she was pictured in the Alberta report, they had Mark in there and they had my wife in there being the first distributor in Alberta. Now we go to Mark's house and we have parties. We, and we got millionaire team people. We, and we received one of the first small trips to Hawaii to the Western Union Mailgram congratulating us on outstanding achievement. There's gold in them herbs. I grew up driving a 1967 GS 400, a Buick convertible. I always loved cars, but I never knew they made cars like Larry was driving. Here's a picture of Larry and me and, and Larry Shine. We all had the same car in 1984. It was all because, what, because of what Larry did. And this is a 1984 SEC. And there's Larry right outside the, Shin, the Sheridan Larina, Larry, Larry, and me with all the same car. I remember, I'll have to find that picture. I remember him taking me for a drive in his, in his, and he gunned it a little bit going down between the roads there at Century Boulevard. And he kind of hit the front end. It was so low to the ground. It was unbelievable. Here I am 22 years old, driving a 1984 AMG SEC. And it's one of the coolest cars I've ever had. I might have, I might have, yeah. Needless to say, when you learn the principles and they become part of you, and you accept the fact that you are a network marketer, and I recruit and sell every day, everywhere I go. There's been people here at my house this week who is who I'm recruiting. There's been people at my house here this week that I'm selling product to. There's people in the community that I talk to. I do this every single day. This is what I do. It's what I believe in, and it's what I know how to do, and it's fun for me. After the Herbalite fiasco with the FTC and the FDA, it was a rough time for a lot of people. I had a friend of mine who had a direct mail business. I said, why don't we try this? I was, it was another network marketing company. I was able to take all of the principles, these concepts and wrap it around leading an organization and teaching other people how to make recruiting and selling the most important part of what you do to get paid. In only three years, I became the number one distributor for that company, which was based in Southern California. In 2002, I decided to launch a new technology with a billion dollar player. And that's a New York stock exchange company which company I'm with today, New Skin Enterprises. We launched a bio, biophonetic scanner. And again, the same concepts. I got started in 2002. And in 90 days, I was teaching the, billion, the millionaire training to an entire globe. Back then it was on a conference call bridge. And then it went to a blog talk radio. And now I do everything on Facebook. Facebook Live is how I do my trainings every Saturday now at 8 a.m. Pacific time, every single Saturday for 18 years now. It never leaves me. I think about it all the time. How do I better communicate the art that Larry and Jim were so masterful at? There was magic when Mark, Larry, and Jim Rohn were together. They grew up together. When Larry said something, Jim could finish a sentence. Jim could say something, Larry could finish the sentence. And we were all at a meeting in Bermuda. There was a magic at this meeting, and it was transforming for me. I knew I wasn't good, very good at many things, but I knew I was good enough not to quit. And I knew I was good enough that I could keep dialing every day, every single day. I was a madman on the phones. And Jim said something that I will never forget that day. I still teach to this day. I still gauge 
my downline by how I do this, this today. And where Jim and Larry came up with this, I don't know, every month we had printouts that were hundreds of long of pages long with supervisors and their phone numbers that were mailed to us. Jim said something sitting in Bermuda, what would happen to your life and your downline if all you did was call five people a day in your group that you had not met? I will never forget a year or two later when Larry Shine, who my, who my wife sponsored off an ad in the newspaper, was number one in the company in 90 days. Larry Shine called me because he was the man. I called him the goat. Larry Shine was the fastest growing distributor ever when we met, when we, he first started. One day he called me and he said, how did you do that? How is it that I just talked to someone on my downline and they feel so good because you've already called them? Larry Thompson taught us, you call with two points. First, make them feel good about you. And second, you make them feel good about Herbalife. How do you do that? By telling stories. I could be good at that. I just knew that if I called and called and called and I told them about me and I said two things, how can I help you? And how can Herbalife help you? And by telling stories, that would make a tremendous difference in my business. To me, that was really significant millionaire training moment in Bermuda. Larry learned his strategy from Bobby DePew, and he learned his philosophy, philosophical approach from Jim, from Jim Rohn. Recently, I was talking to one of the women I sponsored, and I said, look, you deserve to be making X amount of dollars a month, and it blew her away. I said, you just need to be in the right place at the right time with the right people. Literally last month, I remember asking her, and I said, how did you find them? She said, well, I was just doing a Dan McCormick. I said, what's that? She said, well, you always used to say, you just keep calling and make them feel good about you and make them feel good about your company. I found a distributor who found a distributor who found a distributor and I did a Dan McCormick. I found them that way because I, I called five people a day that I don't know. Obviously, I let her know where I learned that. I always give credit to all those inspirational voices from the day I listened to the Millionaire Training Forward. I still talk about it all the time. How can you not? First of all, I think that Larry has shared with me the entire lineage of who taught who and what they taught all the way back to the 1960s. I love history and I like to study great people. It's part of the journey of recognizing that great people figure things out and they're humble enough to share it. These principles that I've learned are life, life skills. My wife and I have been married 37 years. And at the end of the day, one of my great mentors who is an iconic insurance agent from 1928 to 1968. And he wrote 33 books in his life. And he chronicled every aspect of how he trained his insurance team. One day while he was on stage, somebody asked, how do I have a better year next year? His answer was be a better person. At the end of the day, if you're going to be proactive in your business, hopefully those translate to your relationships. I want to say this as candidly as I can. My relationships are real. I have thousands of people in my phone to this day, when I'm driving down the road, I hit my contacts tab. I open a, on a letter. And if I haven't talked to that person in a year or two, I call them because that's what friendships are. If you're a friend and you're in my phone as a contact and I don't talk to you, why are you in my phone? The other day I called a guy, Mike, how are you doing? He was a huge success in my downline years ago. Mike, how are you doing? I got a rule. Your name's in my phone. I haven't talked to you in a while. If you're going to be my friend in my phone, I got to reach out. <laughs> He said, wow, you're a better friend than I am. We were fostering relationships with people who we have things in common. We want to make people's lives better every single day. What Larry taught me was this. We're looking for dissatisfied people. When I sponsored my daughter a couple of years ago, because social media was easy for her, it worked for her. New skin became okay for her. But to do it through the phone, the way Dan McCormick way or the Larry Thompson way, it wasn't okay. It changed. So that's why you're genuine and you're authentic and you're looking for dissatisfied people. When technologies change, when a new product shows up, it's always a reason to call somebody again. That's what a genuine, authentic friends do. How are you? How's your family? How's your job? How's your career? Oh, by the way, do you know, do you know who might have an interest in the social media? When Larry and I do, do it old school, when Larry and I do is not old school, we have got all the tools and even some, even more so. I personally don't like the side hustle terminology. I don't like the gig economy. I get it. Everybody tries to change terminology. I love Larry's terminology. In the 1960s, it was the pyramid marketing. In the 1970s, it was multi-level marketing. And then it became network marketing. At the end of the day, I recruit and sell. I don't care how I recruit and sell. I recruit and sell. I want to recruit and sell online. Recruit and sell online. 
You want to recruit and sell in a meeting in a hotel room, recruit and sell in a meeting in a hotel room. I just had 1,200 people at a meeting in Australia last month for my first, for one of my team members, all in one meeting room. It's just different for everybody, but I recruit and sell. However, you want to word that new school, old school, millennials, whatever, I recruit and sell. There are so many people who are so busy doing so many other things that they're not doing the thing that they need to do the most, recruit and sell. They're so busy trying to market to people to figure out this or to, to and that and make it simple. And they're asking themselves, how can I do it faster, better, quicker? They really are not doing the one thing that's going to build the, and grow their business, talking to people. I'm still doing it every single day. I want to share another story about Larry that I will never forget. And that's at this event. And we've got an upcoming event happening in LA. A distributor is arguing with Larry on whether he has time to come to the event. I'm a young 20 year old kid just sitting there. My wife and I have a grand team. We're doing just fine. And all in all, there's like, you've got to be at that event. You got to recruit and sell into the event. What Larry taught me is that that night was the absolute clear importance of this is an event driven business. The cycles that have never changed. We always are driving towards events because leaders are born at events. And I always say in my company with our little blue diamonds come, along, come in pairs, elite teams come in triplets. You've got to be at the event. I grasp early on that the, sil the silical nature of our business never stops. It's a pre-premonition and it's the event. It's the post follow-up. It's the, that vigorously every single day. In this business, you have got to have your way, your why. For me, it was clear. I didn't have a great upbringing. I didn't have my family and I wanted one. So I knew what my why was, my wife. I wanted to be married young. I wanted a family. I didn't have a dad who wanted to be with his kids. I wanted to be a dad who wanted to be with his kids. I yearned for that. Whatever your why is, it's genuine, authentic, real you. This book that you're reading, you're likely going to have read it many times. You're going to have dog-eared corners you're going to have highlights, you're going to have some notes, and you're going to probably align yourself with your upline and your company because people from every company are going to read this book. You've got to know what your system is, and you've got to know what your recognition is. You've got to have, you've got to know what your event cycle is, and you've got to know what the principles of your business are. And that's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn the macro principles and concepts from Larry and the people in this book. They're going to be riveting and they'll never change for anybody and they will work for you even if you're a brand new person or if you've been in the business for years no matter what the economy is doing no matter what your economy you're at it it will work you've never had a bear market in the world of weight loss nutrition and anti-aging there's never been a bear market for opportunity or in innovation if you're reading this book for the first time you're going to take this book and you're going to see you're not going to read this book because that's what you do with magazine. It's casual reading, it's garbage. You're going to study this book. There's a difference. I didn't just listen to the millionaire training. I studied and just dissected the millionaire training. I didn't try to be a network marketer. I had to become the person who was comfortable in every scenario, even to this day, sitting around the table with extremely affluent, iconic people. And they say, what do you do? And I, and I, I, I say my spiel, whatever my spiel is at the time. I love it. I live it. And I love, I just like the brand new person can see can, who is reading this book. At the end of the day, here's what I'm most excited about. Jim Rohn taught me this with Larry on stage. What I'm most excited about is me. How much more growth, how much more I can grow. I think about how many people are out there on my path who I haven't met yet, who I can teach these principles to that'll be life-changing generationally for them and their family. If you are in this business to make millions of dollars so you can set sail, then do it. I have made millions of dollars in network marketing. I do this because I love it. I love the people. I love the process. I love the journey. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it's easy. doesn't mean that there aren't frustrations, setbacks, disappointments, or, and huge uh-ohs, right? But you bounce back and you realize, hey, you know what? Not everybody's going to see it my way, but I only need to find one new person this year who does. This guy just might just out of the blue called me two months ago. He says, I'm going to fly out there and meet with you. And they're going to, and you're going to be my new sponsor at, at new skin. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. Let's just get on the zoom call. We'll chit chat. We'll figure this out. I can't find this guy on social media. I don't know who he is. We have one mutual friend and the mutual friend that we didn't know 
the mutual friend that we know didn't know him. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, he says, hey, look, I got a ticket. This is a 56-year-old businessman in the Midwest who says, I'm his sponsor. He picks me. I'm like, no, no, Ed, don't do this. That's a waste of, time, of money. I already bought my ticket. What time tomorrow? I'm buying dinner for you and me at the pier in San Clemente. Okay, I'll see you at five. Long story short, he signed up. He's already producing. He's already got appointments. He's calling people every day. Look how many more people are out there like that. He's looking, looking to solve a problem. He's at the end of a runway in his, for his career. He needs network marketing. He needs a residual income that'll pay him for a lifetime. It is so, so true. And I'm sorry, I went over. I shouldn't have read that second one. But um, anyway, have a wonderful day. I will see you on Mon Monday's a holiday. So I won't be here on Monday and I'm working Tuesday. So I will, I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a great week, weekend.